A while back, I did a video about the TH-80 and TH-66 from Ebo Maker. In that video, I said they were really good keyboards for the price of around 100 bucks each. With built-in sound dampening and Gateron Pro switches, they were basically an easy way to get some thuck out of the box without having to do any mods. But sometimes you want a full-size keyboard or at least something close to it. You need that number pad for productivity or just for typing in whatever numbers you want to. Well, thankfully, we have the TH-96. This was sent to me for review by Ebo Maker. Thank you, Ebo Maker and uh, I've had it for quite a while. Uh, sorry, Epo Maker, I'm a little bit late on this one. It's a little bit of an older keyboard at this point, but I think it's still relevant, especially right now while it's on sale. It retails at $129.99, but right now as of recording, you can get it for $103.99, and I will have affiliate links in the description. For a pre-built, readily available keyboard you can get online, it's not exactly budget for some people, but it is still pretty budget friendly, even at that full price. But if you're on a budget, right now you can save some money with my new partners, Mint Mobile. Have you ever thought, well, how the flip is my wireless bill so dang high? What are you paying all that money for? Speed? Coverage? Data? Access to 5G? Unlimited talk and text? Mobile hotspot? Well, today I'm partnering with Mint Mobile, who has plans with all these features starting at $15 a month. They're built on the nation's largest 5G network and keep costs low because they sell direct to you online, cutting out the retail stores and salespeople. Why should you pay more than you have to for access to the same network? Go to trymintmobile.com slash theportlygamer, also linked in my description, to get premium wireless for $15 a month. I've been using Mint Mobile for a while now and it's been great, watching YouTube, listening to podcasts, and more. And I honestly can't tell a difference in speed or performance while connected to Mint Mobile's network. Switching to Mint Mobile is super easy thanks Thanks to digital eSIM cards, which most phones have nowadays, you can sign up and activate immediately right on your phone from the comfort of your own home. And if your phone doesn't have eSIM, Mint will ship you a physical SIM card for free. I was able to install an eSIM on my brand new Pixel 8 within just a couple minutes. No need to call anyone for a QR code, it's all right there online. And if you're about that iPhone life, the latest iPhones are compatible as well. Big Wireless wants you to think they're the only option, but don't be duped, you big ol' silly. Also, right now through December 30th, you'll receive an additional three months if you purchase a three-month plan using my link trymintmobile.com slash theportlygamer also linked in the description yo that's half a year of service for as low as 45 dollars that's less than half of what i pay on one month of my old plan this is an exclusive offer you won't find anywhere else including mint mobile's website and it's available for all plans including unlimited thanks again to mint mobile and now on with the video so here it is, it's the TH-96 in all its 96% glory. As the name suggests, it's a 96% keyboard as opposed to the previous versions, the TH-80 and TH-66, which were 65% keyboards and a 10 keyless. Was it 10 keyless or was it 75? Why was it called TH-80? Anyway, it's available in two color configurations. You've got the white and yellow, which more closely matches the TH-80 and TH-66 that I had before. And then you have this one here, which is the dark gray and white version. Now there's actually a couple of subtle differences between the dark gray and white version I have and the white and yellow, but I'll get to that in a minute. Inside the box, you're gonna get the keyboard, an instruction manual, a braided USB-A to USB-C cable, a hybrid switch and keycap puller, a few keycaps you can swap out for Mac users, as well as some novelty icons, and a couple extra switches, which is pretty nice. It is a hot swappable keyboard, and it's got USB-C port up in the top right corner, as well as a two-way power toggle switch. You can use this keyboard in wired mode, in which case you wanna leave it off. And you also have the option of connecting by Bluetooth 5.0 wireless, and the 2.4 gigahertz wireless dongle which is conveniently tucked away behind the case underneath this little pop-out leg. You've also got rubber feet on the bottom and dual level pop-out feet for multiple levels of height adjustment. As far as your layout, it is a 96% which means it's a little more compact than a traditional full-size layout. You've got your number pad here on the right which is a little bit more compressed in comparison. You've got your multiply and divide keys up along the top under the knob. You've also got some indicator LEDs under the knob for wireless modes and what have you, charging and all that good stuff. These keycaps are some thick boys, die sublimated. The white and yellow version comes with the original MDA profile, which is what the previous keyboards came with. But this gray and white one comes with MDA V2, which is the same height, but with slightly more rounded edges. The only thing I don't like is the font on this one for some reason is different than it is on the other version. The white version has a simple clean font, the same you'll find on the TH-80 and so on. But the gray and white version has like a more gamery looking font. And I've just never been a fan of that style. It's available with Gateron Pro Yellow Switches, Epo Maker Flamingo Switches, or Epo Maker Buterigar Switches, I think is what, I think that's how you say that. I really like how they look. They're like this creamy beige color with like a creamy pale blue. They're tactile switches and I really like typing with these.
These switches, as I mentioned before, are great. They're crunchy. They're like thocky, like a deeper sound, but they're just there's just more of a crunch to them. You gotta say it like that because that's that's how it that's how they sound. The spacebar stabilizer, though, whew, they need some work. Now this is hot swappable, so it would be pretty easy for me to fix the stabilizer and make it sound a little bit better. But I wanted you guys to hear how my copy sounds. So who knows? Maybe you buy a copy today and it won't sound like this, but mine does. So I just wanted to make that clear. There are some sound dampening pads in the plate under the spacebar that. Don't help much with that rattle, but I think once you maybe fix the rattle in the stabilizer, they'll help the sound be a little more subdued in the spacebar. Now, one of the biggest changes here over the previous model, other than the layout, is obviously that really big knob up in the corner. It's huge in comparison to the previous ones. I really like larger encoders, we'll say, on keyboards, and uh, I really like this one. I do just kind of wish that it had a little bit of texturing along the sides. It's completely smooth, so turning it with one finger is pretty difficult. I have to use two fingers most of the time. By default, you can turn it to adjust your volume and click it into mute. Now, I've mostly been using this keyboard in wireless mode, and one thing that's pretty annoying is the fact that once the keyboard goes to sleep, the volume knob does not wake it up. You have to hit another key on the keyboard somewhere to adjust the volume. So if you're watching a movie or something, keyboard goes to sleep and you want to adjust your volume, you have to press another key or something to wake it up. Battery life has been great. I haven't used this keyboard exclusively in the time I've been using it, but I have been using it for a little while now, and I haven't even had to charge it as far as I remember. Now, I have been using it in Bluetooth mode, and I usually have the RGB off to save the battery life, but still, it's lasting for quite a while. It's a 6,000 milliamp hour battery, so it's gonna last you a bit as long as you keep the lighting off. Which shouldn't be a huge issue because the RGB is not super bright for a number of reasons. We've got south facing switches, opaque switches, at least with these Buterigar, I still don't know how to say that, and the non shine through keycaps all contribute to how dull the RGB lighting looks. I'm sure if you swapped out the switches and keycaps for something that let more light come through, it's gonna look a lot brighter. I really, really like the sound and feel of typing on this keyboard. And if you're into linear switches, I don't really know anything about the Flamingo switches, I've never used them, but those Gateron Pro yellows are always an easy win. They're pre-lubed, they're very popular for a reason, they're super smooth, sound really nice. So I think if you like linear switches, those Gateron Pro yellows are gonna be the way to go. There is sound dampening within the keyboard. I'm not taking the keyboard apart, but it does have sound dampening much like the TH80 and TH66. In my review for those, I basically said that those were guaranteed Thok machines. If you wanted a deeper, nice sounding keyboard out of the box without having to spend a bunch of money and do a bunch of mods, those were the keyboards to get. Now, if you want something like those with a number pad and a, a larger knob, well, there you go. And so, yeah, that's basically that. That's the TH96 in a nutshell. And it's a nutshell that I think you might want to crack. I just came up with that on the spot. Can you tell? If you are interested in picking up the TH96 or any of the other TH keyboards from Epo Maker, I will have them all linked in the description. They are affiliate links and they do help support the channel, which is a huge, huge, huge thing for me, even though it may not seem like much to you. If you're already going to pick it up, you might as well use my link. Help me get a little bit back into the channel to fund future things. Um, like a nice microphone or a nice camera. All of this has been possible because of you guys. And if you're new here, make sure you like this video, make sure you're subscribed so you can see other future videos. I've got other keyboards that I'm gonna be reviewing in the future as well as some other exciting things that uh, are just not, they're not keyboards, but they're just cool things. And don't forget about that Mint Mobile link in the description as well. Thank you again to EpoMaker and to Mint Mobile. That's all the time I have for today. So keep an eye out for that. Thank you again for watching. Here's a couple more videos you can check out. And I'm out of here. Bye.